This book teaches you how to quickly find out if your business idea will work. It has a proven method to check in just 48 hours, whether your idea has the potential to become a million dollar business or even more. It's great whether you're starting your first business or you want to start another one without wasting months to see if it might work or not. The author is Noah Kagan, who is the founder of AppSumo, which is kind of like Groupon for software, making $80 million in revenue. Noah tried and failed many times before he got his big success, so he learned how to quickly validate an idea. He still uses the framework I'm about to explain to this day for his new ventures and to show other people that they can do it too. Let's say you want to start a business related to dogs. Your first idea is to offer a service to walk dogs for their owners. The company-focused way of starting a business might go like this. You think of making an app that connects people who want to make extra money by helping dog owners. You spend a lot of time thinking about this app and coming up with a name for it. You pay $100 to have your cousin create a nice logo, set up an LLC for your company, and buy a domain for your website. You watch a lot of videos on how to make apps, run a business, and learn about dogs. Then, you consider learning to code, but soon realize it's very hard. So you try to find someone to develop the app for you, only to realize that it is going to cost too much. And then you give up, again. But, if you use a customer-focused approach, it looks different. You talk to a few dog owners to see if they would pay you to walk their dogs. You find out their real problem is not about walking the dog, but finding someone to look after their pets when they're away. You ask about when their next trip is going to be and get some money up front to take care of their pets. If they say yes, you've found your market. Starting a business without knowing if people will pay is a big mistake. People want solutions, not just ideas, and you need to make sure they're ready to pay for what you're offering. Now, as you've probably understood, everything starts with talking to potential customers. That's why, before diving into his three-step framework, Noah explains the two main fears that need to be addressed before starting. In fact, by helping thousands of aspiring entrepreneurs, he observed that people are primarily blocked by two fears. The fear of starting and the fear of asking. The fear of starting is overcome by adopting an experimenter's approach. People usually think that business is risky and difficult, so they think they need to prepare a lot and plan a lot. But this inaction only leads to more doubts. Most people overthink and then act. Successful entrepreneurs, on the other hand, act first and figure things out along the way. Noah's mantra is, now, not how. And it is actually pretty cool. Be an experimenter. Start with small experiments, repeat them over time, and you'll see yourself transform and overcome the fear of starting. Once you start, you will figure it out along the way. Even if you want to create a million dollar business, that's not where you should focus initially. Start with a much smaller, but much more realistic and closer target, which Noah calls the freedom number. The freedom number is the monthly income you need to cover your expenses. This number gives you motivation because it's much more attainable in the short term. For Noah, that number was $3,000 a month when he started. $1,000 for housing. $1,000 for food and travel. $1,000 for savings and investments. With $3,000 a month, he would have been free. What would your freedom number be? To achieve this, you need to develop the ask muscle. In business, if you ask, you get. If you don't ask, you don't receive. It's simple. Listen also to this caveman agreeing with that. Me ask, me receive. This is the power of asking. There's a fantastic quote in the book that says, I get scared every single time I face rejection and I get sad when it happens. Every day, I feel the sting of rejection, and because of that, I succeed. It reminds me of a commercial by Michael Jordan that went like this. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times, I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. So, the lesson here is to embrace rejections and embrace failure. The average person gets rejected once and gives up. Instead, Noah even sets goals in terms of how many rejections he needs to get. And if you think about it, it's brilliant. Everyone tries to avoid rejections, and so, in contrast, they try to limit their attempts by selecting a few sales opportunities. 
If we removed this consideration and set a rejection target like Noah does, we would be encouraged to dare and try much more. Also, because you keep asking, you'll get some yeses too. But the main point isn't even that. The point is to desensitize yourself to the pain of rejection by repeatedly exposing yourself to it. So practice asking. Noah has his students do an exercise where they go to a coffee shop, buy something, and then ask for a 10% discount. They don't have to say anything else. The point isn't to get the discount. The point is to step out of your comfort zone and experience the discomfort of asking for something unusual in front of other people. Learning to ask is a skill that can be developed. Start by asking for small things and gradually increase, experiencing rejection for increasingly significant requests. That's why Noah makes his students do another challenge, which is to ask someone to invest one dollar in their future business. Okay, now that we've seen how to overcome the two main fears, you're ready to explore Noah's framework to validate a business idea. The first step is to find a business idea based on a problem you can solve. Don't try to copy what others are doing. Don't try to follow the business model some influencer says works for them. The crucial first step is to look at your own problems and think of a solution you can sell. Ask yourself, what is the most annoying, or otherwise called the most valuable problem you can solve for people that you also have a passion or expertise in for the widest niche possible that you belong to? Here's an exercise you can do to practice this. Make a list of 10 initial ideas. Then narrow the list down to only three ideas by removing those you're not very excited about. If you're undecided, think about the three easiest to implement. Don't worry if the ideas aren't fantastic. The point is to learn to create, assess, and quickly validate business ideas. Take one of those ideas and move to step two. This involves conducting simple market research to determine if your idea is feasible or not. Noah calls this the one minute business plan. This process consists of three steps. First, you check if it's a million dollar opportunity. Your job isn't to create demand out of nothing. It's to find existing demand and meet it. To check if you're dealing with a million dollar opportunity, ask yourself, is the market growing, flat, or declining? You should avoid declining markets. For this, look at tools like Google Trends by searching for keywords related to your business. Ideally, you want to see a graph that's at least slightly trending upwards. How big is the market? How many potential customers are there? Here you can use tools like Facebook ads. There, you can see the market size in the area you choose for people with the interests you set. Now, estimate a reasonable price for your product and multiply it by the number of customers in the market. Let's do a couple of examples. For instance, let's say I want to sell beard oil. Google Trends shows that the market is slightly growing. Good. Facebook ads shows there are 2,500,000 people in the United States interested in that. You estimate that you'll sell your product for $50. $50 multiplied by 2,500,000 people equals $125 million. Is it a million dollar idea? Yes. Now, consider the business idea of a monthly subscription for Vietnamese broth. Google Trends shows little interest, no growth. Facebook ads shows there are 1,000 people in the United States interested. You think you can sell it for $20. $20 multiplied by 1,000 equals to $20,000. Is it a million dollar idea? No. Very simple. Don't complicate this step. It's just a first filter. Let's move to the second step. Choose a business model and create a simple revenue and cost overview to see how many units you need to sell with the chosen business model. Here, we make a very basic model, but that's the point. Simplicity. For example, you sell beard oil for $50. The costs of manufacturing, packaging, and shipping is $37.5. So the profit per unit sold equals $12.50. Now I know what you are thinking. Hey, but there are other costs besides these, like the cost of advertising, for example. This is the famous fear of starting that kicks in and tries to make us procrastinate and postpone. Forget about that for now. At this stage, we just want rough estimates. We'll look at the details later. If one unit sold gives us $12.50 in profit, how many do we need to sell to make a million? 80,000 units. You might think selling that quantity is hard, but remember, this is just one product and only the first sale. There are many actions you can take once you start like selling again to acquired customers or adding other products. 
These calculations give us a target and tell us we have a million dollar idea in our hands. Sometimes it's not that simple. It can happen that when you play with the numbers, they don't add up. Then, you need to make some adjustments to the model to make it work. Or don't even bother launching that idea and start again. But if this quick one minute business plan adds up, are you going to launch the business? Not just yet. Hold on, just a bit more. You need to validate the idea. You need to check if there are customers for your business. This part is critical. You'll never know if it works until you test it in the market. Validation, the 48 hour challenge. To validate an idea, Noah uses a challenge with these rules. One, you only have 48 hours. Two, you need to find three customers willing to pay in advance for your product or service idea. Three, you must get real payments and collect the money up front. Here, you need to flex your ask muscle and not be afraid of rejections. Ask for a small advance payment, but don't just settle for a promise of interest. They must give you actual money to truly validate the idea. Many may say they're interested, but actually paying is another story. Obviously, you can guarantee that their payments are fully refundable for any reason to make it easier for them. Also, because you might end up not doing the business after all, so you'll have to give the money back in that case. It is designed this way because with such a time constraint, you're pushed to eliminate excuses and act quickly and efficiently. Plus, you save money because you're not allowed to invest in creating complex business ideas unless you first sell someone on the concept. In fact, sometimes business ideas get complicated and are not easy for customers to understand. However, if you can sell something you don't already have just by describing it to your potential customers, it means that it is good enough. It means that you have identified a problem that is painful enough for people to invest in. For example, Noah showed in some videos how he applied this method. He tried to sell a gardening service. He went door to door talking to homeowners with gardens. They were all a perfect fit because they had gardens, but they didn't have a specific need for a new service and he couldn't make any sales. So he dropped the idea. In contrast, one of his students offered his golfer contacts to take care of organizing everything for their trips to golf tournaments and had quite a success because it was a task they didn't want to do themselves. And it took up a lot of their time. When pitching your idea, be very direct and open by saying that you are developing this new business that you will launch soon. Ask them if they have actually encountered the problem that your business solves and let them talk. It should be a conversation, not a sales pitch. Then ask them if they would like your help with this. If they are interested, pre-sell the idea by asking them for a small deposit to reserve the service, which is fully refundable. Usually, these are people from your circle of knowledge. Don't try to start elsewhere. Look for people close to you who are the right fit. And if you're thinking, but I don't have people around me interested in what I want to offer, well, maybe then you should reconsider your business idea. Try to create a business that serves a community you belong to. Don't initially look elsewhere. You'll get many no's. Remember what we said at the beginning? Embrace rejections. Every rejection is an opportunity to learn what you did wrong and where you can improve. If they say no, ask why and what would make it a no-brainer for them to say yes. This feedback is invaluable. Give yourself 48 hours. And if you manage to pre-sell to three people, it means you have something good on your hands. You can validate your idea in other ways, not just through one-on-one -on -one sales. For example, you can post your product on marketplaces like Craigslist or create a sales page and run paid ads. The downside here is that you have to build the pages and the online graphics, and it might take some time, but it's a good way to test if you can sell quickly without too much effort. The point is to conduct small, quick tests to see if people buy. If no one does, start over. Try a new experiment with another idea. If they do buy, you have an idea that you've now validated. And from there, you start the journey of creating the real business. At that point, you move on to the practical part and the implementation of the business, starting the real entrepreneurial journey after this test phase. The book goes a bit more into this, but it really shines on the validation concept with lots of good stories and examples, if you want to read it. Regarding the entrepreneurial journey, I made a video a while ago talking about what to expect and what skills you need to develop. You can watch it here, to the founder's success.